Orleans. The early part of television was much more educational than it is now. Television was so great then. In my estimation, it was the greatest. I like to add with R. Morrow and Walter Conkright, Huntley and Brinkley, the people who really reported the news as news. I loved such things as the Texaco Theater, the Playhouse 90, those sitcoms like Jack Benny. The Brady Bunch was very nice. I liked it. I like game shows because they are light, they're entertaining, it's informative. One of our favorites is Jeopardy. Sometimes we answer the questions and... and Most times I answer the questions. <laughs> okay. The television, I'm sure that that particular instrument is an American instrument. Don't be so fast to think that everything was invented in America. Not necessarily, All but right. television was. Wasn't it? We're not going to argue on television. <laughs> From Dawson's Creek, Katie Holmes and James Vanderbeek. Long before there were 562 channels, there was something known as variety television, and it was a mainstay of early TV. Tonight, a group of talented young performers called Stomp have been nominated for four Emmy Awards in variety. To celebrate this honor, they've put together an homage to 50 years of variety television and the great performers who made it so fun. Ladies and gentlemen, stomp. Star of Just Shoot Me, David Spade.
All right, stop. Brought to you by Excedrin. Uh, I'm David Spade, and it's true, if I wasn't on TV, I'd be getting laid about as much as Simon Birch. <laughs> Stay close, people. It's all new stuff. All right. Before I introduce a 45-minute clip reel on the history of the dolly shot, <laughs> I'd uh, just like to say that the show I work on is going up against Spin City this year, which makes for a fun rivalry. I saw Michael J. Fox before the show, and he said, Spade, we're gonna stomp your ass, all right? We're gonna knock you back to a mid-season replacement. Don't look directly at me, avert your eyes. You're only 5'6", you'll never make it on your show. Well, aren't you only 5'6"? Don't, don't try to confuse me. Mallory? All right. Okay, the nominees. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, the nominees for Outstanding Directi... Dire what? Directing for a Variety or Music Program are... Louis Horwitz, the 70th Annual Academy Awards. Bruce Gowers for Fleetwood Mac, The Dance. Marty Callender for Garth Brooks, Live from Central Park. Oh, yeah. Robert Esco for Rodgers and Hammerstein, Cinderella, The Wonderful World of Disney. Luke Cresswell and Steve McNicholas for Stomp Out Loud. Don Scardino for Tracy Takes On. Is that it? Okay. And the Emmy goes to Lou Horwitz. Louis J. Horvitz is directing tonight's Emmy Awards. This is his fourth yes. nomination and his second career Emmy on. win. Put my car on on. Well, hello out there. I'm in the truck directing the show tonight, and you're all out there. As a matter of fact, here's Gil Cates, Ready 10, and Billy Crystal, Take 10. Hi, Billy. Hi, Gil. Thank you so much for helping me get this. I'm back to me on 15, Take 15. Uh, I thank Billy, I thank Gil, I thank the Academy of uh, Motion Picture uh, Arts and Sciences. I'm very excited. Thank you all for voting. I guess I should go faster. My uh, mom and dad are out there. Thank them. Stephanie, my lovely wife. A hand for all the cat, my crew in here. Give yourselves a hand. Stand by for my music. And uh, I don't know what else to say, but Don Misher, uh, my mentor and producer, as his protege, he's saying, play yourself off. So stand by music. Play me off. And ready, A. Turn with John Lovitz, Nathan Lane, and outstanding performance in a variety or music program. The 50th Primetime Emmy Awards will continue live on NBC. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Right. Guess who came home with an Emmy? Uh, oh, hey, my yeah. God. I'm so it's proud been. of you. A category. Let me see. Outstanding lead actress in a drama. <laughs> hey, it's her fault. She just left it there on the table. <laughs> I also got her purse. Just Shoot Me, proud recipient of one Emmy and $87 in cash. Premiering one week from Tuesday on NBC. I also rubbed up against Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> uh, oh. Did you have a lovely hair? Carol Burnett. <laughs> Oh, my Lord! Oh, I'm just so tickled for Gary. Uh, 
I, I, I can't think of anything to say for my mouth, that's something. <laughs> now with a brief history of the Emmys, a man that John Lovitz once called the funniest man in show business. Please welcome John Lovitz. I, I, I never said that I was the funniest man in show business, right, so I hate being misquoted. I said I was the funniest and handsomest comedian <laughs> since time began. <clears throat> <laughs> the first Emmy Awards were for the television season 1948. This is remarkable inasmuch as television was not invented until 1949. <laughs> but that didn't stop ambitious television executives from declaring that they were proud of their development slate and looking, f <laughs> and looking forward to a season of demographic growth. In fact, the first Emmy Awards included an award for outstanding television executive with no prior experience in television. The only original category that still exists today. <laughs> this year's nominees are all of them. <laughs> the awards were held at one of the industry's finest establishments. In total, there were only six categories and the whole thing took nine minutes. Tonight, no such luck. The first Emmy for Outstanding Television Personality was split between Shirley Dinsdale and her puppet Judy Splinters. While Miss Dinsdale left show business soon thereafter, Judy Splinters went on to a successful career as the Ottoman on The Dick Van Dyke Show. <laughs> now, over the years, we've had some real interesting categories, and I'm not making these up. In 1951, outstanding male performer seen only in Los Angeles, except for occasional guest shot appearances elsewhere. And the winner was Frank Baxter. You remember Frank. Frank. In 1953, best continuing performance in a series by a comedian, singer, host, dancer, MC, announcer, narrator, panelist, or any person who essentially plays himself. And Jack Benny won that one. In the ultimate category, outstanding continuing or single performance by a variety performer in music or variety, a continuing role in a limited series, a regular series, or just a single one-time appearance in a special. Well, by the time the winner was announced, the show was over and no one cared anymore. When this award system is perfected, we hope to have an Emmy show that gives out no awards at all and lasts for 109 days. <laughs> Next year in Jerusalem! Six-time Emmy winner, Tracy Ullman. You know, when I was growing up in England, we'd watch the Emmy Awards and I'd say to my friends, Someday, I'm going to be standing on that stage. And of course, my friends would all make fun of me and they'd say horrible things like, oh yeah, Tracy, doing what? Announcing the accountants that tally the votes. Kids can be so cruel. From the accounting firm of Ernst & Young, Jeff Rosen, Mel Masuda and Nat Adler. Give it up for the guys. And now the nominees for Outstanding Writing for a Variety or Music Program are... The Chris Rock Show, Louis C.K., Lance Crowther, Gregory Greenberg, John Heyman, Paul Kozlowski, Ali Leroy, Steve O'Donnell, Chris Rock, Chuck Sklar, Jeff Stilson, and Wanda Sykes-Hall. Dennis Miller Live, Jose Arroyo, David Feldman, Eddie Feldman, Jim Hanna, Leah Krinsky, David Weiss, and Dennis Miller. Late Night with Conan O'Brien. 
Jonathan Groff, Brian Kiley, Janine DiTulio, Chris Albers, Tommy Blotcha, Brian McCann, Brian Rich, Michael Gordon, Mike Sweeney, Greg Cohen, Ellie Baransic, Brian Stack, Andy Richter, and Conan O'Brien. Mr. Show with Bob and David, David Cross, Bob Odenkirk, Jay Johnston, Bill Odenkirk, Brian Posehn, Dino Stamatopoulos, Mike Stoyanov, Paul F. Tompkins, and Mike Upchurch. Late Show with David Letterman, Rob Burnett, John Beckerman, Tim Long, Gabe Abelson, Michael Berry, Carter L. Bays, Will Forte, Eric Kaplan, David Letterman, Jim Mulholland, Gerard Mulligan, Rodney Rothman, Eric Stangle, Justin Stangle, Craig Thomas, Joe Toplin, and Steve Young. And the Emmy goes to the team from Dennis Miller Live. This is the fourth Emmy win in this category for the writers of Dennis Miller Live. Speaking for Dennis Miller Live is Dennis Miller. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank all my uh, brilliant writers. I'd like to say I love you to my wife, Carolyn, and my uh, sons at home, Marlon and Holden, and I have to say this for my son Marlon because it's from a Simpsons thing we watch and he loves it when I say, that meat's still good! Okay, and uh, <laughs> it'll mean nothing to anybody else. Um, I'd like to thank everybody at HBO, uh, Carolyn Strauss and Chris Albrecht and Jeff Bukas, and most of all, I'd like to thank the two men who helped me get this job, uh, Vernon Jordan and, uh, <laughs> and Michael Fuchs. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, from ER, Emmy nominee, Noah Wiley. Television milestone number seven. They worked on the front lines of a foreign war, treating the wounded and mourning the dead. A crew of surgeons and nurses who knew that the sense of humor was the only way to survive. This team of medical renegades took us into the agony and irony of battle. We came to know them by their quirks and nicknames, and in all of them, we saw a great deal of ourselves. In 1983, they folded their tents as the largest audience in television history watched them say goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Lane. Thank you, thank you. It's a thrill to be here on the heels of my Emmy defeat. <laughs> Damn that genius Mel Brooks. To help salute 50 years of award-winning television and to present the award for outstanding performance in a variety program. Since everyone here at the meeting is sharing, I feel I can tell you that all through my childhood, at just about this hour on a Sunday night, I was glued to the greatest variety program of all time, The Ed Sullivan Show. And yes, let's hear it for Ed. And everyone who isn't on Dawson's Creek was probably watching too. The Sullivan Show, a veritable bouillabaisse, and when was the last time you heard those two words together? A veritable bouillabaisse of show business, circus, and the arts. Maria Callas rubbed elbows with Sly and the Family Stone. Literally, from what I understand. <laughs> At least that's what it said in the police report. <laughs> and this category is almost as eclectic as a Sullivan show. There's a Broadway performer, which is coincidentally something I've been. There's a woman with multiple personalities, which, strangely enough, I suffer from. In fact, 
right now I'm actually a nine-year-old toddler named Brittany who refuses to wear her retainer. <laughs> there are three hosts, which I've also been at the Tony Awards when I hosted, uh, we got lower ratings than the Weather Channel. And there's a country singer, which I've never been, but I have lost my pickup truck, my gun rack, and been lonelier than a tumbleweed on a subway. <laughs> tumbleweed on the subway, that was the flip side of Achy Breaky Heart. And the nominees are for outstanding performance in a variety or music program are Garth Brooks for Garth Brooks Live from Central Park. Michael Crawford for Michael Crawford in Concert. Billy Crystal for the 70th Annual Academy Awards. Jay Leno for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. David Letterman for a Late Show with David Letterman. And Tracy Ullman for Tracy Takes On. And the Emmy goes to Billy Crystal. This is Billy Crystal's second Emmy for hosting the Oscar ceremonies and his sixth career Emmy. Put that there, it makes me feel so much taller. <laughs> no one should ever complain that the Oscars is the longest show on television ever again. Uh, I am delighted, uh, I'm thrilled actually, um, that um, you recognize me, the, the, uh, and the show, Gil, Cates, everybody at the show, my writers, Dakota Films, who lets me be the only actor to appear in all five nominated films. Um, when we do our little uh, film opening, thank them. I have to say, in watching all these clips, I feel so proud to be part of the 50 years of this amazing industry. Um, the first thing I remember seeing on television that was funny uh, was Sid Caesar. And I spoke to Sid this week on the occasion of his birthday. And I told him that I was sitting there watching him. Please don't play me off. It was The King and I. They were doing a takeover of The King and I. He came out with a bad bald wig, the capri pants, bare feet. He hit the pose. He got a laugh, and he grabbed his foot and screamed, Who's smoking in the palace? And I thought that was the funniest thing I ever saw. And it made me want to be funny. And to see Sid on stage tonight with Bob and, and Milton Berle meant a great deal to me. I'm so proud that you agree that a host can be more than just introducing people. Thank you so much. In this year on television, the networks cover President Nixon's historic trip to China. The Bob Newhart Show premieres. A deadly terrorist attack disrupts the Summer Olympics in Munich. That, that's a gun, all right. And Brian's song wins an Emmy for Outstanding Dramatic Program. Was the year 1972, 1973, or 1974? We'll return with the answer. Next, Michael J. Fox, Juliana Margulies, and Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. In this year on television, the networks cover President Nixon's historic trip to China. The Bob Newhart Show premieres. A deadly terrorist attack disrupts the Summer Olympics in Munich. And Brian's song wins an Emmy for Outstanding Dramatic Program. The year was... 1972. Please welcome three-time Emmy winner, Michael J. Fox. Television milestone number six. It was the most agonizing tease in television. A rich, mean-spirited millionaire is mysteriously shot at season's end, and hysterical fans are left waiting three months to find out who pulled the trigger. Speculation ran so high that thieves tried breaking into Lorimar's script department. Cast members were interrogated on the street, and across the planet, including Las Vegas, bets were waged on who did the dirty deed.
She could have tried any time she wanted to. The gun was right there in the closet. Well, she had to be out of her mind or drunk. Jay, What are you doing here? Where's Kristen? Don't come any closer. I won't call the police. Don't you come any closer. Sue Ellen, I brought you things. Regular angel of mercy, aren't you? What happened? What are you talking about? I have finally figured everything out, that's all. Oh, you're crazy. I was at that condo that night, looking for J.R. And yes, I did have his gun. But you saw how drunk I was, and you still gave me a drink. No one I'd put the gun down to take it. It was you, Kristen, who shot J.R. From Chicago Hope, Hector Elizondo and Mark Harmon. Good evening. Well, since unfortunately this is the age of public confessions, uh, I have one of my own. As a young man, my favorite female character happened to be a madam, Amanda Blake, Gunsmoke's Miss Kitty. She could pour a drink or bake an apple pie, and both with a plum, may I say, and she gave you a good idea of how the West was won. All right, Harlan. Wow. Miss Kitty. That's right, baby. For me, it's uh, last Monday night. Mark McGuire tying Roger Maris's home run record. <laughs> Lifting his son up when he crossed home plate, acknowledging the Maris family when he saw them in the stands, and Roger up above. A close up of Sammy Sosa in right field applauding. And then the guy who caught the ball saying he didn't want anything, just wanted to give it back. Perfect at a time when we need a few heroes. Your mind. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series are Kim Delaney for NYPD Blue, <laughs> Laura Innes for ER, Cameron Mannheim for The Practice, Della Reese for Touch My Angel, and Gloria Rubin for ER. He goes to Carmen Mannheim. This is the first Emmy nomination and win for Cameron Mannheim. And to get this award from my peers is such a huge victory. I must thank Wilma Marcus, who taught me, Mary Ellen Mulcahy and Peg Donegan, who fought for me, David Kelly, who believed in me. You are my hero. I need to thank Jeffrey Kramer, Bob Breach, Jonathan Pontel, Randy Stone, the Gersh Agency, the incredible cast that I get to work with every day, the unbelievable crew headed by the sublime Dennis Smith, and my mother and my father, who are here with me tonight, and who paid for every cent of acting school. <laughs> I brought my autograph book. I hope you all will sign it, especially, especially the four women in my category. I am honored to be counted among you. This is for all the fat girls. <laughs> world before television must have been very boring. What could they have done? Eight o'clock at night, there's nothing to do, and you're sitting at home. We would gather together as a family at night. We would sit around the dinner table and we would talk. My father used to write poetry and he would read his poetry. I think increasingly that doesn't happen anymore. People gather around their TV and they're looking at the TV. The TV is where the fire used to be. I can remember a show called Rin Tin Tin. That's got to be one of my earliest favorites. Yo, Rinny! 
because I would go to bed at night, I'd yell, Yo, Rennie. And my parents would yell, Yo, Rennie, back to me. Then I knew it was, a, I, it was all right to go to sleep. Howdy Doody was right up there. There was no show better than Howdy Doody. And I also loved the original Mickey Mouse Club. If I was upstairs or somebody was out of the room and somebody black came on, you'd scream for everybody to come, come, there's somebody black on television. And we'd all run and watch, you know, because you rarely saw anybody black on television in that time. The Lone Ranger had Tonto, and the words that they used to use are not really Indian words. There were more Spanish words than anything else. So we used to always kind of pick fun at Tonto because we knew that as Indian people, we wouldn't act like, like he did. We go from Beulah to Moesha. Beulah was a maid focused on the life of the people that she was working for. Moesha is a strong young woman focused on how she can develop herself in a strong, good way. I like Mad TV. Home of Oh, yeah. TV. Yeah, Mad Saturday TV. Night Live. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Will Smith. Smith. Yeah, he's a good role model. My favorite TV show is I Love Lucy. I've been watching it since I was four. I collect dolls, teapots, cookie jars. So why don't you join the thousands of happy peppy people and get a great big bottle of Vitamina Benjamin tomorrow. If there was one woman on TV that I found to be the most attractive is Mary Tyler Moore. In all the roles, all the way back from the Dick Van Dyke show up through today, she's just one powerful, good person. I am a soap opera addict, and uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't talk about it too much at the fire station, but the guys do know it. I like tape the soap operas during the day and watch them at night. I watch 90210, Melrose Place, Allie McNeil. I like Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He wears a toupee. Jerry Springer's one of the best. I have no idea why anybody would want to watch that. We watch anything, you know? No matter how stupid, how crazy it is, we will watch anything. From the Emmy-nominated drama series, The Practice, Dylan McDermott and Lara Flynn Boyle. We're here to present this year's Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. The nominees are Gordon Clapp for NYPD Blue, Hector Elizondo for Chicago Hope, Stephen Hill for Law and Order, Eric LaSalle for ER, Noah Wiley for ER. And the Emmy goes to Gordon Clapp. This is Gordon Clapp's second nomination and first Emmy win as Detective Greg Metaboy on NYPD Blue. Well, I, I can't top Cameron, but, uh, you know, somebody asked me what my favorite television moment was just before this, and uh, I think it just changed. <clears throat> I, I, I don't suppose I'll bring the country together quite the way Mark McGuire did with his home run, but this will look just darn nice over the fireplace. Um, I have to thank uh, God and Stephen Bochco not necessarily in that order. <laughs> I have an enormous debt to David Milch. Few people have debts to David Milch. He usually has debts to those people. But, um, and uh, I, I would ask uh, Jimmy Smits to accept my thanks and love on behalf of the producers, directors, uh, cast, and crew um, that make going to work like coming home. Um, my special love and thanks to Billy and Deb and to my family back in New England, thank you. Ah, 
Not, not another shot of Kelsey Grammer. Just put the camera in front of Dharma and leave it there, for God's sake. If you got another camera, put that one in front of Heather Locklear. Or behind her. What in the hell is going on here? Where are your pants? You got to be comfortable. This could go wrong. Emmy winner and nominee for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series, Juliana Margulies. Well, growing up in my house, I wasn't allowed to watch television. So it was incredibly important to me. Uh, I would try and run home from school and sneak anything I possibly could before my mother got home. Batman and Robin, Three's Company, anything I could get my hands on, and she'd walk through the door. My sister and I would turn off the television. My mother would walk straight over, put her hand on it to see if it was warm. <laughs> we would look at her and say, well, it was, um, it was Little House on the Prairie, or it was the Waltons, and somehow, miraculously, she accepted that. Thank God for reruns. <laughs> The nominees for Outstanding Supporter Actor in a Miniseries or Movie are... Hume Cronin for 12 Angry Men. Gregory Peck for Moby Dick. George C. Scott for 12 Angry Men. Martin Short for Merlin. J.T. Walsh for Hope. And the Emmy goes to George C. Scott. George C. Scott could not be here tonight. He is out of town working on a film. He sends word that he is thrilled and honored to be nominated, especially after working with such an esteemed cast. We accept this award on his behalf. The star of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sarah Michelle Gellar. As seen Friday night on TV Land, the Television Academy has already awarded Emmys to the artists and craftsmen behind the scenes, including visual effects, animation, and makeup. The cast of Buffy is greatly indebted to the makeup people, who, among other things, design demons and sharpen fangs every week. I'm thrilled to say that this year, the winner for Outstanding Makeup for a Series went to the makeup artists of my show. The Emmy for Outstanding Makeup for a Miniseries, Movie, or Special was won by Merlin. The Emmy for Outstanding Visual Effects for a Series went to Yo-Yo Ma, inspired by Bach. And the nominees for this year's Outstanding Animated Program were Cow and Chicken, Dexter's Laboratory, King of the Hill, The Simpsons, and South Park. And the Emmy went to The Simpsons. Yes. You won, all right. You won more than you bargained for. Woohoo! Congratulations to all of the artisans who won television's greatest honor for their great behind the scenes work. The Emmys will return with Julia Louis Dreyfus, Gillian Anderson, and the most poignant goodbyes in television history. The winner, Lily Irene Kinn, executive producer. Uh, well, I, um, I thought I was real blasé and, uh, and had a lot of sophistication. <laughs> And I thank you all, and I'm just real tickled. <laughs> and, but this is not the greatest moment of my life, because on Friday I had a really great baked potato at Nibbler's on Wilshire. <laughs> Please welcome Emmy winner Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Good evening. My name's Julia, and I'm unemployed. It was sweet while it lasted, but after nine years, Seinfeld had to end, as all shows do, even this telecast eventually. 
To faithful fans and cast members, bringing the curtain down on a long-running show can be a poignant experience. Here's a collection of some memorable television goodbyes. Hey, Elaine, what was it you were about to say to me on the plane when it was going down? I've always loved you, knighted airlines. <laughs> Well, it's only a year. That's not so bad. We'll be out in a year. You can talk? Let's hear you say something. Goodbye, kids. Sorry. We're closed. I think we all need some Kleenex. There's some on Mary's desk. Your angels. Oh. I know you always thought I hated you. Oh. But I love you. I really don't want to say it, but the time is coming, so for the last time, good luck and good night, Chet. Good luck, David, and good night for NBC News. This is my last broadcast as the anchor man of the CBS Evening News. For me, it's a moment for which I long have planned, but which nevertheless comes with some sadness. All I want is to stay with you, but here I go. Goodbye. I guess that's when I knew the old days were gone. Things had changed, and they were never going to be the same again. To the way to Tipperary, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. The lady who turned out the lights is an idol of mine. It's a thrill for me to say, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Tyler Moore. Just you remember, Missy, I've been unemployed a lot longer than you have. Television historians may note that another beloved member of our group was not with us for that final goodbye, Chuckles. Chuckles, who wrote the credo for a clown. A little song, a little dance, a little seltzer down your pants. <laughs> and then, of course, he went to that fateful parade. Well, his choice. The nominees for Outstanding Directing for a miniseries or a movie are... John Hertzfeld for Don King, Only in America. Tom Hanks from The Earth to the Moon, Can We Do This, Part One. John Frankenheimer for George Wallace. Steve Barron for Merlin. William Friedkin for 12 Angry Men. And the nominees have a winner. And that Emmy <laughs> goes to John Frankenheimer.
John Frankenheimer has won three previous Emmys in this category and has received several Emmy nominations for his work on the 1950s classic TV drama Playhouse 90. Tonight, he wins for the miniseries George Wallace. Really, to the Academy, especially to the, to the director's branch, thank you so much for this. I mean, there are just two guys that without whom I would not be standing here tonight. And the first, of course, is Gary Sinise for his absolutely incredible performance. <clears throat> and the second is my editor, Tony Gibbs, who just did such an extraordinary job. Uh, I want to thank the Turner executives, particularly Brad Siegel, for their support. Mark Carliner, our executive producer, for letting me do this, for Ethel Winant, my darling, darling friend, for making me do it, our cast, our crew, and my wife Evans, without whom none of this would be possible. I love you a lot. Thanks. Last year's Emmy winner for her role as Agent Scully in The X-Files, Gillian Anderson. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Miniseries or a Movie are... Helena Bonham Carter for Merlin. Julie Harris for Ellen Foster. Judith Ivey for What the Deaf Man Heard. Angelina Jolie for George Wallace. Mayor Winningham for George Wallace. And the Emmy goes to... Mayor Winningham. This is Mayor Winningham's second Emmy win and her fourth nomination. <laughs> I actually won this award um, 18 years ago. I think 17, 18 years ago. But we were on strike, the actors. And so we didn't get to go. Um, except Powers Booth went. But he won for Jim Jones, I think, so he probably thought that he had to show up so that he could make a better impression or something. But <clears throat> I was, I confess I was relieved that I got to win but not have to make this walk up here. I was young and felt really nervous about it. And, I'm older now and still nervous, but I feel so lucky that I get to say thank you. I'm honored to be a part of George Wallace and to the cast and the crew, the producers, the production staff, to TNT, especially John Frankenheimer, the visionary, and the inspirational Gary Sinise. Um, thank you to everyone involved with George Wallace and to my children. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's my life's pleasure being your mom. Happy birthday, happy. And Jason, just wait. Steve Glick, my agent, thank you for leading me up here. Cheers. <laughs> and lift off. Lift off of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. The shuttle mission will launch. My God. One minute 15. There's been an explosion. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles. Downrange. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Great enterprises require great risks. The men and women who died today knew that. They believed in the physical and intellectual challenge of space flight. And in that, they were an extension of all of us. Their spirit will live on. Their adventurous ways will be picked up and carried on by others. And the frontiers of space and knowledge will be expanded. And finally, to those families, as we shared your pride, we share your sorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Brokaw. Thank you all very much. 
When I was a young man growing up in the small towns of the Great Plains, television coverage of important events in distant places was for me the electronic version of the yellow brick road, even if the images were black and white. Television took me to places that I never expected to see and gave me preferred seating at historic occasions. It also fired my ambition and my imagination. I wanted to see for myself that other world out there beyond those broad horizons where I lived. Of course, I worried that all the big events had already happened. Not for the first time, I was wrong. Television news coverage moved the conscience of the nation in the battle for civil rights. When that was followed by assassinations in the 60s and Vietnam, presidential resignations, space triumphs, and tragedy, the collapse of communism and the opening of China, television news became the common denominator in a land of greatly varied geography, beliefs, material wealth, and political interests. It's a privilege to have been a part of all that, but it can also be humbling. The night that I stood at the Berlin Wall as it came down, I was elated and a little terrified. After all, I knew that the audience would reach from the Oval Office to the most distant corner of the land. And all I could think was, Brokaw, don't screw this up. <laughs> On those nights and others, when a president is in trouble or when an airliner goes down, all eyes turn to the television screens and the world seems to be a much smaller place, about the size of a living room, with a family of mankind gathered around. We're not perfect those of us who bring you that world through that electronic window. There are times when there is more heat than light, more excess than judgment. We need to work constantly in making the bold and creative strokes in the pursuit of excellence, but it's also a two-front effort. We need your help in keeping this powerful and persuasive and pervasive medium from becoming what Edward R. Murrow warned against, just a box with wires and lights. So tonight, on behalf of all of my colleagues from all the networks, many of whom are on duty tonight, far from home in difficult circumstances, thank you all very much. And we'll see you tomorrow, whatever the news brings. And I think I can assure you, there will be news. Thank you all very much. David, a great deal of thought, Grandpa. <laughs> and afterwards, I... Here is a bulletin from CBS News. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. It is not a bill. All right. We have uh, NBC's Bob McNeil on the line now with a report. Please go ahead, Bob. White House Press Secretary Malcolm Kilduff has just announced that President Kennedy died at approximately 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. Wherever you were and whatever you might have been doing, when you receive the word of the death of President Kennedy, that is a moment that will be emblazoned in your memory, and uh, you will never forget it, as, um, as long as you live. Nominated for lead actress in a drama series, Jane Seymour. The nominees for Outstanding Writing for a Miniseries or a Movie are... For Armistad Maupin's More Tales of the City, Nicholas Wright. For Don King, Only in America, Cario Salem. For From the Earth to the Moon, Apollo 1, Part 2, Graham Yost. For Gia, Jay McKinney and Michael Christopher. For Merlin, David Stevens, Peter Barnes, and Edward Kumar. And the Emmy goes to Cario Salem. 
This is Hikario Salem's first Emmy and one of eight nominations for Don King, Only in America Tonight. Uh, my parents will kill me. It's actually Cario Salem, so... Um, this is a great, uh, splendid honor. I, I'd always wanted to win something, and uh, I never realized how just elementally embarrassing it is. It's just uh, amazing. Uh, I was broke four years ago. Um, I started writing four years ago. I have to thank my parents. They gave me money so I could continue to write, uh, along with love. So thank you, Mom and Dad. Uh, I want to thank my girlfriend, uh, Dana, for uh, threatening to leave me if I didn't continue to write. Uh, my buddies Thomas Carter and Josh Brand, who hired me for the first time and gave me the privilege of um, calling writing my profession. Uh, HBO for probably being the gutsiest company in America today making television. Um, John Hersfeld, the director, Ving Rames, Ving Boom Boom Rames, who, who gave such an extraordinary performance as Don King. Um, my agents at CAA, thank you very, very much, everyone. Thank you. Television celebrates the 100th anniversary of Carnegie Hall. Ted Koppel holds a national town meeting on the legalization of drugs. The horrors of the Holocaust are recalled as we watch War and Remembrance, the 30-hour sequel to Winds of War. And The Wonder Years is honored with an Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series. Hi. Was the year 1988, 1989, or 1990? The answer when we return. Coming up, Whitney Houston, David Duchovny, and outstanding variety music or comedy series. <laughs> Television celebrates the 100th anniversary of Carnegie Hall. Ted Koppel holds a national town meeting on the legalization of drugs. The horrors of the Holocaust are recalled as we watch War and Remembrance, the 30-hour sequel to Winds of War. And The Wonder Years is honored with an Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series. The year was 1988. Emmy nominee, Whitney Houston. Thank you. Once Upon a Time is an irresistible opening line. And that's the way Cinderella begins, a story that's been enchanting us for almost 300 years. In 1949, Walt Disney gave us an animated version of the story. Later, Cinderella inspired songwriters Rodgers and Hammerstein to write a beautiful new score, first performed on television by Julie Andrews in 1957. In 1965, Leslie Ann Warren tried on the glass slipper. And last year, I had the opportunity to co-produce a new multicultural version of this timeless musical. Thank you. I'm so proud of our seven Emmy nominations, and I'm equally proud to introduce our own Cinderella. When she's not at the palace, she's busy playing Moesha, Ladies and gentlemen, singing the opening song from our Cinderella, Atlantic recording artist, Brandy. Love it! The sweetest sounds I'll ever hear are still inside my head. The kindest words
Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Shandling and David Duchovny. Congratulations on the Emmy, Gary. Oh, thanks, David. I appreciate it. How's it feel? Huh? How's it feel? How's it feel? Yeah. Good. I feel good. I mean, I feel fat, but that has really? nothing to do with... I feel unattractive lately. I don't know. I don't feel like I... I could use a little male support, knowing that I'm still would be, uh, you know, a pe What is that? That's I'm just so captivated by you. Yeah, well. And I'm a little upset because my favorite comedy show is going off the well, air. Well, that's nice of you, but... Seinfeld. Like, well. Now, why did you do that? I mean, because my, well, my show's going off this year. I've never was... seen your show. You were on it. That doesn't mean I watch you... it. Oh, man. But I do remember feeling really good about my performance at the time. Oh, well, then I guess you didn't see it. So, uh, could we just be, seriously, by the way, what are you up for this year? Oh, actually, I'm up for best yeah, actor. We're out of time, because you know what? We should really just do this. Wow. Could we just I get through this? I am sorry if I hurt your feelings. No, no, it's fine. Let's just try and be professional and get fine, through this. Fine, fine. The nominees for Outstanding Variety Music or Comedy Special are... The 70th Annual Academy Awards. Christopher Reeve, A Celebration of Hope. Garth, Live from Central Park. Rodgers and Hammerstein, Cinderella, The Wonderful World of Disney. The 1997 Tony Awards. There you go. By the way, uh, the uh, Emmys, of course, were moved from Pasadena to Los Angeles this year so David could be closer to his wife. And the Emmy goes to the 1997 Tony Awards. This is the fourth Emmy win for the Tony Awards as Outstanding Specials. Speaking for the 1997 Tony Awards is executive producer Gary Smith. Oh, thank you very much. This is a little difficult. I'm going to have to read something. I'm sorry. Rosie, the first time you hosted the Tony Awards, you said to me in words that I can't use on national television, if this show wins the Emmy, Gary, you'll get all the blanking credit, whereas I really deserve it. Well, Rosie, let me tell you that neither one of us really deserve all the credit. The reason I'm up here accepting this is not only because you did a nice job hosting and I did a nice job producing the show, but if it weren't for the Broadway producers, the Broadway performers, and the Broadway craftsmen that brought their product to the stage of the Radio City Musical, we simply wouldn't have a show. And people like Roy Somlio and Isabel Stevenson and Keith Sherman, and who along with Les Moonves and CBS, make sure that the Broadway theater continues to thrive on television. We have the easy part. Thank you, Max, Jake, Zach, Doug, Daisy, Sam, Mom, love you. Thanks so much. Nominated for lead actress in a comedy series, Ellen DeGeneres. Hi, how are you? Yeah, you know, I love television. I really, really do. Television can entertain us, it can inspire us, it can educate us. It's a way for us to look at other people's lives that we might not be accustomed to and learn something from. It's a way to, to, uh, to feel represented, to feel validated, to look at someone on television and say, that's me, there's someone else like me out there. 
You know, before Mr. Ed, anyone who heard a horse talking to them <laughs> thought they were crazy. People said it was unnatural that horses didn't talk. <laughs> Growing up as a little girl, I felt isolated, and I know I wasn't alone. I, like many other young girls, would fantasize about dressing a little slutty, pleasing my man, even calling him master. <laughs> and if I was naughty, I'd be put in a bottle with a cork on it, <laughs> till my master thought it was time to come out. And come on, what prisoner of war didn't long for a show packed full of memories of those wacky times in the barracks <laughs> with those nutty Nazis? No wonder Hogan's Heroes was a hit. It seems like sometimes we have to wait for a long time for a show that it seems very, very obviously due, but why, oh why, did we have to wait so long for a show about nuns? I guess they knew it was a controversial subject matter, it had to be done right, it had to be perfect, she had to fly. <laughs> I wish I'd thought of that, I wish I would have flown. Oh well. Because it's not like they didn't try shows like that before. Everyone remembers that, that famous, famous pilot starring Meryl Streep playing someone fairly religious who could jump really high, the hopping Episcopalian, that didn't work. <laughs> Of course, Meryl went on to, to be a big movie star. A lot of people started in television, went on to be big movie stars. Uh, Sally Field, Tom Hanks, uh, Woody Harrelson, of course, Bob Keish and Captain Kangaroo went on to do memorable roles in Taxi Driver, Raging Bull. I could be thinking of Bob De Niro, but I do know that Mr. Green Jeans did something in Godfather 2. My point is, You'd be surprised, a lot of huge movie stars tried to get their start in television, couldn't do it. Charlton Heston had a development deal, three failed pilots in a row. My mother, the AK-47, my three guns, and my favorite, why can't I just shoot somebody? I truly am honored to have been part of the first 50 years of television, and I hope to be part of the next 50, closer to, to the first part of the 50. <laughs> and now the nominees for the people who are still on television for the most part for Outstanding Variety Music or Comedy Series are... Dennis Miller Live. All righty, let's get to it. One's the Pope, the other's a cigar-chomping communist dictator, and together they're fighting crime on the USA Network this fall on Holy Smokes! And in the Paula Jones case this week, President Clinton answered questions concerning his sexual past. Here we see the transcripts labeled August 15, 1991. Late show with David Letterman. Do you have any creepy kids in your class? Well, Astrid. She drives me nuts. Is she, is she a disruptive influence in class? No, not really, mm -hmm. but when she, when she goes does out... Does she share her materials? Yes. Oh, she does? Yeah, but when she goes out on the... Does she work well with others? Mm. Sort of. Mm -hmm. Right. But when she goes Is she out... constantly interrupting? Mm, you are. Politically incorrect with Bill Maher. That's two different types of violence. I'm talking about, pr you know, preying on women and preying on children. There's no children. praying. What is praying? It is. Uh, it's well, a voluntary act. Do? Let me ask you something. When men go into these strip joints and testosterone is pouring out their eyeballs, what do you think they're going to do? It doesn't come out the eyeballs, don't it? Are you? <laughs> The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Now how, do, now, how do you tell, like, which, which is the boy turtle and which is the girl turtle? Well, Fred here, you see, he's the male tortoise. Yeah. His shell is concaved in here, and, right. it, and um, so that he can go like this when it's time uh, for them right. to mate. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. Come on. Tracy takes on.
Late Show with David Letterman. The Late Show with David Letterman has received 19 Emmy nominations since 1993. This is the show's first win for Outstanding Series. Speaking for The Late Show with David Letterman is Bob Burnett. I'm not sure, but I think I uh, just kissed a seat filler. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, sir. <laughs> um, uh, to this, the staff and crew and the band of The Late Show, uh, you're, you're the greatest. And I'd also like to thank, uh, of course, the only reason we're up here, Dave Letterman, who is, uh, he's, uh, he's simp simply the, uh, the, the kindest man I know. And uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. As some of you know, Dave uh, breeds uh, prize-winning poodles in his spare time. And uh, unfortunately, there was some, a problem with one of, the, one of the litters last night. Nothing serious, but he called me and said, I'd like to be with everybody, but uh, damn it, right now my place is with my puppies. So good luck, Dave, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina Applegate. We've been looking back on the rich history of television, but some amazing things are happening with television technology today. Remember tonight's television milestone number nine, Johnny Carson saying goodbye? Well, hundreds of thousands of families in America are connected to interactive TV, and when television milestone number nine came on, they had the opportunity to get involved. With interactive television, you can watch Johnny's Farewell, but you can also get extra entertainment. Emmy's Deluxe, you might say. You can learn about Johnny's career, buy merchandise, or play a trivia game. And check this out. You can vote for your favorite Carson character and compare your choice in an instant poll. And it gets better. You can even watch old video clips from The Tonight Show. New York, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guest tonight is Sherry Lewis. Backstage at the Emmys with a brief update of some of the awards so far. First time winners include Cameron Mannheim for The Practice, Gordon Clapp for NYPD Blue, and Lisa Kudrow for Friends. Other winners, Late Show with David Letterman, George C. Scott for 12 Angry Men, David Hyde Pierce for Frasier, and taking home two awards each so far, the 70th Annual Academy Awards, including Billy Crystal as host, and the Larry Sanders Show. The 50th Emmy Awards telecast continues now with a look at another historic milestone in television history. Emmy nominee for Outstanding Leading Actress for her role as Dr. Catherine Austin in Chicago Hope, Christine Lottie. Televo television milestone number three. We never knew the name of the city where the series took place, but the multiple storylines, the overlapping dialogue, and an ensemble cast that mixed docudrama with street st smart humor took television in a whole new direction. America's TV historians and journalists have voted the 1981 premiere episode of this groundbreaking series as one of television's landmark achievements. Starts now. Never in my entire life have I listened to so much incompetence covered up by so much unmitigated crap. So tired of dealing with people like this every single day of my life.
Ladies and gentlemen, from the premiere episode of Hill Street Blues, please welcome Torian Black, Barbara Bosson, Charles Hayde, Veronica Hamill, James Dicking, Joe Spano, Betty Thomas, Michael Warren, and Bruce White. And the co creator of Hill Street Blues, Stephen Bochco. It's a great thrill to be here, particularly in light of the fact that Hill Street Blues' first year of life was a real struggle. There had never been anything quite like it on television before, and the viewing audience was slow to respond. Arguably, if we hadn't received 21 Emmy nominations and won eight Emmys that first season, Hill Street might not have survived its second season. So on behalf of this wonderfully gifted ensemble, including those no longer with us, Michael Conrad, Keel Martin, Renee Enriquez, and Trinidad Silva, I'd like to express our deepest gratitude to all those who believed in and honored us. Thank you very much. Nominated tonight for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series, please welcome Roma Downey. Thank you. I'm honored to present the award for Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series, and the nominees are... Mark Tinker for Brooklyn South. Bill D'Elia for Chicago Hope. Thomas Schlamme for ER. Paris Barkley for NYPD Blue. Chris Carter for The X-Files. And the Emmy goes to... Ah. Uh, there's a tie in this category. So, um... The first winner is Mr. Mark Tinker. This is Mark Tinker's third Emmy win as director of a drama series. He previously won from Emmys for directing episodes of St. Elsewhere and NYPD Blue. Tonight he wins for directing the pilot for Brooklyn South. Ay, ay, ay. Um, blank. Okay, um, the four guys that uh, I was nominated with did really terrific work, and clearly I was the one who knew where the, to send the uh, eye bray, if you get my drift. But uh, payoffs, be payoffs. Um, the, the, the gentleman who's uh, most responsible for this is David Milch, whose word uh, on the page is staggeringly exciting on a daily basis. And, and timely, too, I might say. I think an hour before we shoot a scene is always good. Uh, Bill Clark, Bill Finkelstein, and of course the guy whose name is on the, uh, on the building, Stephen Bochco. I'd like to say hi to my son, Jake, back in Boston. I miss you big time. Chris for putting up with my nonsense. And uh, finally, I'd like to recognize one person. Uh, I've, across the last 20 years or so of doing our television, I have uh, helped bring a, a, across the portrayals of villains and heroes. Oh, listen to that music. This is for me. <laughs> and uh, the biggest hero that I can think of is a guy who's on the police force almost 20 years, started down in South Central for about 10 years. Now he's a detective in Van Nuys. My brother, Mike Tinker, uh, I'm really proud of him. Thank you. And the second Emmy goes to Paris Barclay. This is a first nomination and win for Paris Barclay, director of NYPD Blue. Talk about making me sweat. <laughs> Oh, thank God uh, for keeping me sober long enough to get out of a, an apartment on 10th Avenue and here on the stage of the Shrine. I'm so happy. Um, and uh, thank my uh, earthly higher power, Stephen Bochco, wherever he may be, 
Um, I, I was thinking if there was a way to unscrew all this stuff, I'd give Steven this, and like, the cast would get the lady, you know, Jimmy and Dennis and, 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 and our, uh, Brian Markinson and Annie Corley, who were terrific in this episode, were just so wonderful. And the crew would have to get the legs and stuff because they're what I stand on. My agents and managers, Steve Lovett and William Morris, and now CAA, thank you. Thank you for bringing me here. And this big old bass would have to go to the man who, when he handed me the script, uh, handed me this Emmy, and that's uh, David Milch. Your genius is what we all stand on. Thank you so much, sir. When I was a kid, the heroes that I chose to role model or to emulate had a profound impact on me going to Vietnam. Davy Crockett he caught a bullet in his teeth in one of his episodes, and when I got to Vietnam, I realized that catching a bullet in your teeth has a whole nother message. And one of my heroes today would be Andy, the, the Vietnam vet cop. When I see Andy struggling on NYPD Blue, I see truth. Andy in that show struggles with alcoholism, he struggles with some racism, he struggles with a lot of beliefs that he hangs on rigidly, like the world is tough for him. But he does a very good job of coping. In some cases, it's not only tough, but he sees truth better than people around him. This past year, Murphy Brown was a staple in our house because uh, she was going through breast cancer treatment. And at the same time, I was going through treatment. I um, had to be hospitalized. I had, you know, some breathing problems. And I came out and I went back to work and I was exhausted. And I remember watching the episode where she's sitting in her dressing room and Jim Dial says to her, Slugger, maybe it's time you take a little break. And her reaction was the same reaction I was having. Jim, ever since I learned about this cancer, you've been avoiding me. And when you're not avoiding me, you're talking to me about quitting. Well, I'm not quitting. When television first came into existence, everybody thought that that was something new. The elders said that's not anything new. We always knew about television long before they became a reality. And the Indian term for that is switched. You're able to see in a box people in far off lands and being able to see that within your own living room. Your, your mind has a better feel for the world. You're more educated, you're more informed. There's so many times when we have had a front row seat on history and felt a collective sigh or a collective sadness or a collective joy. That is what is so important about television and, and what it can do for us, it can bring us together. From Law and Order, Benjamin Bratt. Hello. Two weeks ago, Emmys were awarded for guest actor, actress in a drama series. The nominees were... For guest actor in a drama series, Bruce Davison for Touched by an Angel, Vincent D'Onofrio for Homicide, Life on the Street, Charles Durning for Homicide, Life on the Street, John Larroquette for The Practice. Charles Nelson Riley for Millennium. For guest actress in a drama series, Veronica Cartwright for The X-Files. Swoosie Kurtz for ER. Cloris Leachman for Promised Land. Lily Taylor for The X-Files. Alfre Woodard 
or homicide life on the street. The winners were Cloris Leachman and John Larroquette. We're here to present the award for Outstanding Writing for a Drama Series. Benjamin, go to bed. And the nominees are... <laughs> James Yoshimura for Homicide, Life on the Street. Bill Clark. Merida Steam. David Milch. And Ted Mann for NYPD Blue. Bill Clark, Nicholas Wooten, and David Milch for NYPD Blue. David E. Kelly for The Practice and Chris Carter for The X-Files. And the Emmy goes to... Nicholas Wooten, oh. David Milch, and Bill Clark for NYPD Blue. <laughs> NYPD Blue won the Emmy in this category last year. This is the show's third Emmy for outstanding writing in a drama series. Speaking for NYPD Blue is Nicholas Wooten. Oh, wow, this is an incredible honor. Um, it's an incredible honor to be able to work with gentlemen such as these on a day-to-day -day basis as a young writer and be mentored by them, and Stephen Bochco as well. I thank all of them. Uh, we'd also like to thank our cast and crew who are incredible. Um, <laughs> who else would we like to thank? Um, <laughs> we'd like to thank the, uh, the New York City Police Department. Um, we would like to thank Paris Barkley, who was honored here tonight. Um, we'd like to thank our writing staff, our guest actors in this episode who are so wonderful. I'd like to thank my family and uh, Mary Frances Fago. Thank you very much. Three-time Emmy winner from NYPD Blue, Dennis Franz. Thank you. It had been a best-selling novel for over five months, but in the autumn of 1977, broadcasters and advertisers seriously doubted that we would be interested in seeing the story come to life. But when this African-American saga made its debut, 100 million people sat enthralled for eight consecutive nights as they shared a common, soul-searching experience with an unprecedented 36 Emmy nominations this miniseries dramatized a chapter of American history that cried out to be told. Quinte. Is the Emily you think? Please help me. Is the Emily? Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! I'm gonna kill Master Tom Mo. Man ain't worth a chicken. He ain't alive. Mama, get off my way. Don't do it, George. No, damn it, no. He's your daddy. And I've tried to keep that dream alive, and all you choose. You is free at last. Ladies and gentlemen, from the cast of Roots, LeVar Burton, Leslie Uggams, and Ben Vereen. Thank you. We are here to present the award for Outstanding Made for Television Movie. And the nominees are... A Bright Shining Line. Don King, Only in America. Gia, Twelve Angry Men. What the Deaf Man Heard, Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation. And uh, 
The Emmy goes to <laughs> Don King, only yeah. in America. Yes. Don King, only in America, received four Emmy nominations this evening, including one for lead actor Bing Rains. Speaking for Don King, only in America, is executive producer Thomas Carter. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is David Blocker, our producer. Uh, there were times when I thought this movie might not get, get made because of uh, so many uh, legal and other issues involved in it, but thank God it did. And so I want to thank uh, HBO and all the people there who, who uh, came through and made this movie. Um, John Matoyan, um, Jeff Bukas, uh, Richard Walser, Gay uh, Hirsch, um, Paige Orloff, the people at CAA who helped me so much, particularly Brian Sibarell and Tony Etz, um, our producer, um, David um, Blocker, who did an incredible job, John Herzfeld, our director, who was so committed, uh, Ving Rames, who just gave such an outstanding performance, um, far beyond anything that we imagined, and, and, and thanks uh, to Carrie O'Salem, who you've honored here tonight for being such an extraordinary find and a friend of mine and being one of the best young writers we found in Hollywood in a very long time. Uh, thank you all very, very much. Thanks, Mom, Deborah, Tina. Five-time Emmy winner, Candace Bergen. I'm here to present the award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Miniseries or a Movie. As we celebrate this golden anniversary, here's a look at some of TV's great actors who won the Emmy. Sir Lawrence Olivier for Love Among the Ruins. It is love that is on trial here, gentlemen. The honor and integrity of love itself. Tommy Lee Jones for The Executioner's Song. What would you say if I told you I deserve to die? I'd say you were a damn fool. Don't pay any attention to what I say. Pay attention to what I do. And Dustin Hoffman for Death of a Salesman. I put 34 years into this firm, Howard, and now I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat the orange and throw the peel away. A man is not a piece of fruit. This year's artists and outstanding lead actor in a miniseries or a movie are equally impressive. The nominees are Jack Lemmon for 12 Angry Men, Sam Neill for Merlin, Bing Rames for Don King, Only in America, Gary Sinise for George Wallace, Patrick Stewart for Moby Dick. And the Emmy goes to Gary Sinise. This is Gary Sinise's first Emmy win. He was nominated in 1996 for his portrayal of Harry S. Truman in the HBO movie Truman. 